Hello everyone, welcome to Spidey Stash. It's a show where I talk about Spider-Man memorabilia through the years. And I'm guessing that at this point, you know what this episode's all about already, don't you? How did you know that? This is about the Ben Cooper costumes, yes. My name is Bruce Wechtenheiser and I can breathe again. I've been collecting Spider-Man memorabilia for 50 years now, along with the comic books, and I've been doing these videos and matching articles for about a year now for Spider-Man Crawl Space. So please join me for episode five, which is about the wonderful Ben Cooper costumes. And I'm not sure if you enjoyed these costumes as a child. I know I did. Uh, I was a sold out Spider-Man fan from the age of four on and the Ben Cooper costumes. Uh, I was four back in 1968. The Ben Cooper costumes allowed me a chance to be the real Spider-Man. I didn't have to make my costume. I could buy it at the store and I could be Spider-Man. So let's see uh, how we are doing here with that. Here I am back in 1972. I was eight years old. I was in downtown Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and I was guarding a jewelry store waiting to walk in the Halloween parade that year, eight years old. And as you can see, I had a little bit more of an elaborate costume. Uh, I convinced my mother to sew me a mask so I would have my head covered because with these masks, you know, this wasn't the real Spider-Man. You could see the back of your hair. There's a rubber band back there that you would use. This wasn't Spider-Man. So I forced her pretty much to sew. And she wasn't that great of a seamstress. It came out pretty much like the shape of a lunch bag. And I wasn't that great of an artist. So my webs and my eyes that I made on that costume were not the greatest either. But I accessorized. I put a blue sweatshirt underneath the costume so I could have some blue sleeves. I bought red winter gloves and I marked them up with webs with a marker and I bought high red socks and I put them on over top of my tennis shoes and drew webs on those so that I could be the real Spider-Man. And I, I had to be the real Spider-Man. That's what I wanted to do. And I could live it out a little bit with Ben Cooper's help. And there's my mom. Uh, she was a good sport. That same year, I went to a Cub Scout meeting uh, for costume night and parents were allowed to come dressed and my oldest brother, uh, got the costume ready for her to be a magician. So there it is, magician and me. The Ben Cooper costume for the Spider-Man costume was actually the highest selling costume that Ben Cooper ever produced. So a lot of kids were happy back in the old days. And this is really cool art that I saw on the internet and I contacted the artist and I'm using it by permission of Carl Heitmuller Jr. He's drawn a series of these. Uh, what would the hero look like if he was out fighting crime in a Ben Cooper costume? So there's Spider-Man fighting crime in the Ben Cooper costumes, just like we could when we were kids. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of these wonderful costumes over the years. Ben Cooper, as you know, uh, maybe you don't know, they dominated uh, the Halloween costume scene for children. They pretty much had a stranglehold on the on the uh, competition, on, on the genre back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s, and slightly into the 90s, uh, before they kind of went out of business. So here's the earliest known Marvel memorabilia item ever produced. Yes, I said that correctly. No one knows of any earlier Marvel items. So not only is it a Spider-Man item, it's the very first item produced with Marvel memorabilia. It predates the Merry Marvel Marching Society kits. It predates uh, the t-shirts and different things you can order through the comics. As far as collectors can know at this point, this is it. <clears throat> and there's been a lot of articles on the internet. You could search it up. 1963 Ben Cooper but the first thing is you need that pumpkin box or you don't have the right box for your costume and the thing about Ben Cooper before we go on they used and reused boxes all the time so this is the 1963 box but they used it into 1964 maybe into 1965 while they still had some in the stock and they updated the costumes a little bit and so you might get a 64 or 65 costume in a 63 box you have to really look around at what you have and also with Halloween costumes, the people that bought them could have put anything they wanted into it. So they could mix and match. If you don't have a store stock, a vintage store stock that was never opened up box, you might not have the right pieces. It might be a mix and match. But this one is the earliest known, and it was 1963, as you see on the side of the box. <clears throat> it, was, it says 20% uh, cotton. The chest piece was a cotton. It was just like a flannel. It was very soft. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it had a copyright date of 1965. If your costume doesn't have 63, I'm sorry. If your costume doesn't have 63 copyright, 
then you don't have the right costume. And all the costumes, if they have copyrights back then, were right there by the waistline. Okay? So you need all those things to have the 1963. It was $1.99 in the stores back then. Some places it was $1.78. I found a cool box. Uh, well, actually, let's go back to the 63 for a second. I did own the 63 costume at one point. Uh, I got it off eBay a number of years ago before I realized that it was the earliest known Marvel item. I resold it uh, to a friend for a decent, you know, profit, but uh, not as decent as if I'd known it was the first Marvel item. But, but uh, it was cool to have it at least for a little while. This one is kind of unique. I haven't seen the cat costume before from 1965. Another collecting friend of mine uh, traded me for that one. Uh, he gave it to me about a year and a half ago. And you can see the dollar seventy-eight. Again, it was still uh, rayon with a flannel chest piece, very soft. And this one had no copyright date. So it could be 64, it could be 65, we're not sure. But it had no copyright date on it. Now here's a lie on the box. <clears throat> we know darn well these masks were not well ventilated. They didn't even have nostril holes back then. All they had was a little slit by your mouth. So you, it was hard to breathe. Everything was getting wet in there. Uh, it was not comfortable. Here's another 65. This is kind of a rare version with a white circle up top. Okay. It still had the flannel chest piece in that one. And the yellow circle boxes tend to have not the flannel anymore. They tend to have the uh, rayon. Okay. But here's another lie. As seen on TV, I don't think so. Spider-Man wasn't on TV until 1967. So he was in this line of characters known as TV stars but he wasn't on tv yet maybe these two were on tv they're tv heroes supposedly but i don't know about that they're just kind of generic heroes on the box side of the box there but it was a 1965 it the one that i have still has the uh copyright right there 65 and it was still flannel here's one that was 65 that was not flannel anymore all rayon but finally we had the marvel characters on the box along with dracula and it was $1.78, but it was all rayon by now, all rayon. And here's two versions that I've collected over the years. The one on the left seems to have more ink on the spider. The one on the right has less. I don't know if it's a real variety or variation or if they just ran out of ink. There's the colorful one and less colorful. And they're both copyright 1965. Not flannel anymore, rayon. Okay. This one we're not sure because the box is just too hard to read. Is it 65? Is it 66? But it's the owl box. I call it the owl box. There's an owl on the outside of it. And here it is. It's rayon again. It's not flannel. And it had no copyright on it. They started producing some pretty cool catalogs back in the day, 1966. There's Spidey in the upper left-hand corner, along with other characters. 1967, a very rare item, was the superhero cape and mask sets. They had Spider-Man, Thor, Captain America. And I think I've only seen them pictured one time, maybe, over the years. Somewhere, like an actual... Uh, one of these in a, in a bag or maybe loose. And it was also interesting because Captain America, in a two dozen assortment, 12 Captain Americas came in there and only six Spider-Man, six Mighty Thor. Might Thor, actually. So Captain America seemed to be the better seller, according to Ben Cooper. That's what they did back then. 1967 TV, or I'm sorry, newspaper ads. Woolworths was a cool department store that sold a lot of these costumes for $1.98, $1.67. They also released masks alone sometimes and hats and wigs in 1968. And here's another catalog in 1968. There's Spider-Man down in the bottom row along with other characters. And this is really cool in the Playthings magazine from 1968. This is seven costumes and they're all connected across the top. And they're hanging from these cardboard hangers and they would be on display in the store. So they would track you to the boxes of costumes. You could see what the costume looked like hanging there, and then you picked out your box with your correct size, and you went home happy. But those are store displays, seven of them attached. Here's John Romita artworks trying to find its way into Woolworths ads in 1968. 69, there's a little Spidey down in the right-hand corner. I expanded it for you. This one is kind of unique. It was special designed or granted for the Grants department store. I had one of those locally here in Johnstown, uh, hometown of Steve Ditko. Where I've lived my whole life. Grant's department store, these were set up specifically for Grant's by Ben Cooper. You can see Grant's on the side, you can see the Grant's uh, tag. And it was kind of weird because the box said 1965. You can see that their sleeves are gone for the first time. 
the plastic is on the back like vinyl the front's still rayon but the costume itself was marked 1970 so the box was 65 another part of it maybe said 72 the costume was 70 we're not sure here's a cool box from 1972 with spider-man and the characters on it here's an ad in the comics back in the 70s you could mail away right to marvel comics and get your costume with the sleeves cut off in 1976 according to the front of the box these nice boxes came out with Steve Ditko artwork, uh, the co-creator of Spider-Man. And they were pretty cool, but they also featured nostril holes, finally. We can breathe a little bit better. Not the best, but a little bit better. But the, the front had 76, the side had 72, and the costume had 72. And finally, we're to the all vinyl. The whole thing is vinyl. It's very slippery. Yellow back. Cool artwork on all the different sides of that box. Just wanted to show you the cool Dick Kill artwork. 1976, they started coming out with fun ponchos. You get a poncho, you get a little mask to put on your eyes, look like Spider Man eyes. Pretty cool Dick Co style artwork on the cover of different packaging of that in 76, but the actual item did not feature Dick Co artwork, unfortunately. Well, that's okay. 1978, sometimes they released the costumes in just a plastic bag sealed. So here's the tag that was inside the plastic bag. Here is, is the costume after it was opened up from the plastic bag. Same vinyl, same cut-off sleeves. There we go. 78, also the Tiny Tot version of the box with some DC characters as well as Marvel. 78, more generic, just superhero. 78, another generic superhero. Woolworths, 579. That, it was getting more expensive by that point. 1980, here's a uh, catalog, and there's Spider-Man with his scary hands. So they're still going strong in 1980. 1981, here's a poncho that was on a cardboard hanger to be bought in the stores that way. And later on, 1989, they re-released it, <coughs> excuse me, and it was in a bag, sealed in a bag. 1987, here's an adult, finally, adult costume, and it came on a cardboard hanger. And you can see the back, it was all one piece, the back just had a tie string at the top. And that's what the hanger looked like. It had your size marked off with an X. And it had the uh, Kmart price sticker on it. Oh, I miss Kmart. 1989, still going on. There is some more costumes still out there. And I don't claim to have every box shown on this uh, slideshow. It'd be almost impossible to find every box. They had so many varieties. They also made just masks by themselves. Rubber over the head masks. 1968, this was a cool one. Went over the entire head. 1978 it was thinner rubber and it kind of got, got brittle over the years like if you touch this one now it would probably break into a thousand pieces because it was thin rubber even though it was never worn it still has a tag on it it dried out and it's gonna break and we don't know what year this one is it looks cool it's on ebay a lot these days i got one last year but there's no copyright date on the tag maybe the 80s sometime now here's my favorite 1968 play suit. I didn't know these things existed as a child. I would have had these all the time. Sturdier for more playtime. And it came in the box. There's no Spider-Man on it, but Spider-Man's marked in the box. No, no date on the box. <clears throat> but this is the cool costume. Look at that. You got webs on the sleeves. You got webs down in the socks. You got two pieces designed. You got a hood for the back of your hair. You got a belt to go around. This was, this was really cool. I wish I had this as a kid. And the copyright on the costume is 1968, so it was pretty early, but it was heavy-duty design, so you could play more. And the back was really cool. It was buttons, buttoned down. That's just awesome. Incredible. Later in the 70s, uh, 70, 72, 75, it's hard to tell. It says 72 in the front of the box right by Spidey. Still a play suit. 72 on the side. 75 on that side, same box. And there's a Toys R Us price sticker. And on the actual costume, it's one piece now. No webs anywhere except on the chest. 1970. 1970. There it is. And here I am again, people. Hopefully you've enjoyed this walk down memory lane. Hopefully you, you were a fan of Ben Cooper costumes. If you have any cool stories to tell, I'd like to hear them. Uh, of your joy and your fun back in your days. Any, even any photos you might have. Because some of us, you know, that started us off as the real Spider-Man. And we continued it on into adulthood. So anyway... I hope that you enjoyed the show this time, and I hope that you tune in next time. Spidey Stash. God bless.